Hello everyone. Another new feature introduced in CC5 is that it offers more free add-ons to speed up your workflow with other leading industry tools, such as Auto Setup from Armazet. So in this video, we'll continue exploring other use cases that make Marmoset 2 bag a great option when it comes to rendering our projects. In this case, we're going to focus on Marmoset Viewer. We'll start by setting up the scene by importing the mesh using Auto Setup from Marmoset, applying its materials, and adjusting the lighting, camera, and post-processing effects as we saw in the previous video. Keep in mind that Marmoset Viewer is designed to run on a wide variety of devices and in a lightweight way, so there are certain limitations. For example, lights that cast shadows are limited to three. Although you can use more lights, only the first three will cast shadows. Omni lights won't cast shadows, and some shading models, post-processing effects, and rendering features are still not supported. We'll make sure the camera is centered to make navigating and rotating the scene easier. Generally, to do this, we select the main mesh and go to View, Frame Selection, or simply press Ctrl F. To export the file in View, we go to File, Export, and select Viewer. We can add artist credits and a link to our portfolio simply by filling in the title, author, and link fields. Naturally, the texture quality settings have a significant impact on the file size. Here we can choose a low, high, or unreasonable quality, an app title for the purpose of this viewer, which would correspond to textures up to 4K. All we need to do is press the export button to generate the file. Once exported, we can view the file locally using Marmoset Viewer, which is installed for free with Marmoset Toolbag, but can also be downloaded separately from the Marmoset website. Once opened, we can put it in full screen and also isolate the different layers with the normal maps, color information, roughness, metalness, and the mesh topology independently. And all of this comes with the advantage of being able to view the model in 3D in real time. We can also share this same file directly on various 3D communities, such as ArtStation, as easily as adding an image to a new project, and with the same viewing benefits we saw earlier. When exporting, we can also choose the HTML option. Once we set the size and a few other parameters, we can hit export. But if we're going to embed the viewer in a frame, it's important to select full frame. This way, Marmoset Viewer will ignore the height and width values and will adjust to the size of the frame. With this, a simple HTML file will be created that displays our scene. This file is very useful if we want to embed or display the scene on our own personal website. We need some basic HTML knowledge, but it's very simple. I created this super basic HTML file, and we're going to embed this code simply by copying and pasting it where we want. We replace the example HTML with our own, adjust the frame dimensions, and that's it. Keep in mind that for this to work, we need to upload it to a server, since we can view it locally. This would be the result with the files already uploaded to the web. Another very interesting option is creating a gallery on our own website. We're going to create a pose for each of our characters and character creator to present them with a bit more personality. We export the FBXs for each of them, as we already know, and load them into Marmoset using the Auto Setup plugin on a previously configured but empty scene, as we saw in the previous video. Finally, we'll export a viewer for each of the characters using the HTML function we just saw. We'll also take some renders of each character to use as thumbnails for our gallery. In the same template as before, we're going to copy the following base code. We'll give our frame whatever name we want, in this case viewer frame, and we'll replace the sample HTML with the HTML of the scene we want to appear by default. We make sure that allow full screen is set to true and define the size of the viewer. To create the clickable thumbnails, we'll copy the following code. Here, we'll replace each HTML with one of our own, 
Make sure the target has the same name we defined at the beginning, in our case, viewer frame, and swap out the images for our custom thumbnails. I've applied a style sheet to our gallery to make it look a bit more modern and attractive, and this is what it looks like once it's uploaded to our website. All the code used will be available in the corresponding article on Realision Magazine, so you can use it in your own projects. I hope these videos have helped you improve the presentation of your projects thanks to the new tools in Character Creator 5.